Okay. Hello. So, so here's uh, Samuel, the new release manager now. Uh, oh, I go here. Right. So, is the new release manager like the upcoming one, where I'm handing over uh, <laughs> the management to him continually. And uh, well, first we'll again show just a bit of some uh, statistics uh, similarly to what you might have seen on last NixCon. Uh, but yeah, well, though they ha haven't really changed that much since there, well, you can see like, well, like uh, on, on the whole, the, the activity is continually rising. And you can see this, uh, for example, on the number of issues that are created, like the, the last year isn't complete yet. So it's still, still growing. Uh, when compared to last year, uh, last year's 2017 was about there. Mm, the point. I don't know the software. Sorry, the point was about there when the presentation was made. So if we compare, we are already over what last year's uh, amount of issues open at the same time. So we're probably going to overshoot the number of issues open last year for this year. Next, the number of issues by user. It's pretty similar to um, what was last year. The top three is the same top three as last year. <laughs> I don't know if there's any sort of surprise since it's not the issues open since, uh, since last year, it's since forever. So uh, the uh, car temp and PTI will need to, uh, <laughs> to work a bit more if you, they want to be on the top three. But um, pretty much every other name just switch around in there. And the same happened for the uh, number of issues by Assigny. Uh, the top two, I believe, was the same. The last one, LNL7, was the same. But in the middle, there were some changes, some places switched. But pretty much mirrors everything. It's uh, only a one year more than the stats for last year. So there's no surprise there. And I um, compared the stats from last year. That's why I started with uh, a bit of the video instead of, the <laughs> of this uh, new uh, presentation. And about pretty much every uh, stats here uh, is the same, except the maximum duration. <laughs> there was a new issue. I didn't have time to look up what was that issue, but if, uh, not if. I think someone here knows because of the laughter. <laughs> but something was open for a while and then was closed. <laughs> and um, this is the issues open per day. Um, I w we don't have the red lines for these releases. Uh, the tool that generates this takes a while to run on this laptop. And uh, the data collection takes days, but the tool to run, only the, the IPython notebooks, about 30 minutes on this laptop, so I couldn't update it with the red lines for the new releases, but they're about there, and yeah, about there. So, strangely, there's a bump for new issues open before, uh, between the two releases, but nothing really remarkable for the releases. And if we look back here for the issues open by day, there is this spike that was uh, pointed out last year. That's the uh, NixOS wiki move, which was closed around there, <laughs> skewing the graphs. Um, and this is pretty much the same data <laughs> the others. Sadly, 
I had trouble uh, getting the, da the data for the pull requests in the same format that was used in the last year, so I don't have those stats. This is why it's only the issue stats. Um, I'll be looking maybe into generating those later and put them online, but sorry about that. Um, I'm going to uh, let uh, Vladimir talk about uh, the next subject. Yeah, we, we can, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, so you saw on the graph, we still are opening more issues than we are closing all the time. Like we are above the zero forever, so that's. It's about the same for uh, the pull request though. <laughs> yeah, so that's, well, might be considered a problem, but yeah, well, well I think it's, I personally think it's pretty common in large, dis larger distributions to have lots of unsolved issues that somehow aren't that much important for people to spend lots of time on. All right, so that were some statistics. Uh, now maybe. Uh, well, I'll say something uh, about the releases themselves. Well, in the unlikely case that you didn't know, we have, uh, well, the main development process is uh, a kind of rolling style compared to some other distributions, and that's not really suitable for everyone, so Every half a year now, we, we are doing stable releases, which are supposed uh, <laughs> not to break things much, either by just real bugs or just by uh, the fact that they, uh, that something changes that uh, you don't expect, uh, not really being bad for anything. So. Right now, the, the cycle has stabil stabilized on every half a year. We fork off the master branch. Um, we, we test, uh, we have some period where, where we uh, don't do any larger changes to it for one month. And then that when it looks good, it gets uh, like officially uh, blessed as uh, suitable for <laughs> usage and uh, and that gets maintained for uh, for the half a year for about six months <laughs> um, right and so for that I'll um, quickly say what kind of changes are expected to get into uh, these releases. It, uh, it's uh, the, the main focus of these releases were for like, like for production environments, for example, and uh, similar ones where you mainly need uh, security fixes. So that's the main thing to put these backports in there, and many upstream packages provide uh, some kind of stability updates, stable updates, so, so for example, Linux kernel. So these are also the main things that can get in there, though maybe not as important as the security fixes. Uh, yeah, well, and well, for some software like, like browsers, it's basically every release is a security release. So that's that's always put in there typically. Um, so there might be some confusion about uh, who actually does. Sorry. <laughs> the, the things. Uh, so, right now the workflow was that uh, that uh, people who do the changes to, to the main branches uh, are 
or the people who merge them are expected to usually notice that uh, these kind of changes, uh, for example, fix security bugs or something like that, and uh, we would like th them to uh, either notify us, uh, but the best to create a backporting pull request or, or backport uh, the changes directly. Uh, um, anybody can, uh, can do a backport. You don't need to be a committer. Everyone can do one backport. So if you open a PR, you don't have commit bits. It's not important. Uh, you know that this PR is going to be backported since it's either a, we had this that showed up quickly. These are the current, the current rough guidelines for backporting. Um, they are linked in a RFC that's currently work in progress. We're going to touch about that RFC um, later on. But uh, those, uh, if anything matches this, it's a candidate for a backport. Uh, forget about that. That's not right anymore. <laughs> There's a uh, Darwin stable branch now. Uh, but it's mostly the security sensitive stuff that's those are important even if it's uh, a breaking update for that software like uh, chrome if yeah. if chrome uh, gets updated you yeah. okay we're, we're hiding the down back ports okay don't look at the don't look behind the curtain um so the security uh, stuff like the Chromium, uh, Chrome, that's extremely important since uh, that's a, a big security, uh, sorry, a big surface of attack. And um, there's, sorry, I'm going to need to, <laughs> to read to be uh, able to see. Uh, there's bug fixes in applications. Sometimes uh, the, some software gets updated by the other distros like Debian, Fedora for their uh, stable branches. That's a good place to check for uh, for patches that fixes the issues that major updates would have fixed, but we can't really backport. Uh, Filling that, if the software is not, uh, if it's like a leaf from the dependency, dependency tree, sometimes it's right to uh, update with major versions, especially for services uh, for things that depends on services like uh, Spotify. If the service changes, uh, we can't just tell your, our users, well, um, Spotify changed, we can't. That's not a good UX. So uh, software that depends uh, on other services like uh, those uh, cryptocurrencies, there's uh, the, uh, well, Spotify is uh, the prime example. Now uh, back to the who. Huh. Right. So, yeah. Uh, well, the, there's the the RFC in progress. So, right now it's everyone because there's so really the the speed of inflow of pull requests and and or changes directly to master is so really huge. Uh, so that couldn't even two people couldn't really manage to watch all of those changes and decide whether they are suitable. And right, uh, well, for the, like in, um, in several months, the, there will be another cycle, release cycle beginning, and we don't uh, really know who will do next. <laughs> Uh, release manager B, uh, well, like the uh, the approach now is that the, there are always two managers at once uh, being replaced in even odd fashion, right? Uh, so I will be leaving for the ne next uh, next one, and we are about to choose. Uh, my replacement. Uh, so, so you can think about this whether you would like to uh, 
to organize it. And uh, if you are interested, uh, uh, write us an email. And uh, even if you think you can't do it for any reason, even if you have any interest, ask us. We're, we'll be able to talk. Maybe you can do it. Probably you can do it. I thought I couldn't do it. <laughs> I did do it. And everything went fine. Since it's, uh, like I said, uh, senior, junior, um, I was helped uh, along the way by mostly Vladimir, but also the other uh, previous release managers. The community was, uh, I don't have a list of names since uh, I would pretty much list half of the committers uh, since, well, active committers, since every t everyone was uh, helpful, I, there's nothing to say. <laughs> How about that? Uh, so even if you think you can't do it, contact us. And we're not only looking for 1803. Since, well, normally we, we, will, we should have had a release manager at the end of 1803. Yeah, at the end of 1803, the release manager should have already been selected. Uh, it was, uh, sele I was asked in August. So already there was a bit of a gap. And we, I don't want this to happen again. So uh, show yourself for 1903. And if you have questions, or maybe you think 1903, you can't do it, but you know you have the time for 1910, also show yourself so we know who's interested. Um, well, I don't think we have anything else. Do you have any questions? Well, maybe we need. <laughs> so, not a question, but an uh, amendment. Um, if you merge pull requests on GitHub um, and you don't know. Uh, whether you should backport. Um, what, what I d usually do is also ask, just ask the user that uh, brought up the backport because they know the software usually, they have a motivation why they made this upgrade and they also might know if it affects this current stable branch because not all updates or all fixes are also relevant for the backport case. More questions? That wasn't a question, but that, okay. that's nice. <laughs> okay. Do you have and an actual right. question? <laughs> Um, so I often, up until now at least, backport either new packages or updates under new attributes. Is that okay? Or I, mean, I just like it because it means I don't have to change everything. I can just change that. I know I could use overlays, and maybe I should, but I'm just, what, what's your thoughts on should we do that? Uh, on new packages or what's the other? Or a major update, but okay, under um, a new attribute. Under a new attribute? Yes. Um, right now, we don't have any better backport guidelines than what was written there. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea is uh, from stable to stable, you shouldn't have to change anything. So if you use a new attribute to backport something, yeah. uh, that new attribute has to be in the stable. But is that right? I'm, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so that's, that, I guess that's my question. As release manager, do you want us to be doing that or not? I think I mean, we can work around it with, with overlays, or we can add it to. Yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, these kind of changes are very unlikely to break anyone's system, so that does seem all right. Keep so, doing it then. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit. Uh, <laughs> the rules are overall a bit hazy. Just we are creating them as we go. It's a, Okay, do we have another question somewhere from anyone? Nope. Okay. Then once again, uh, thank you guys for your talk. <laughs> I was uh, I was checking the uh, I was checking the timetable wondering what's up next and uh, I'm happy to say that what's up next is you filling your body with coffee because we've got a 30 minute break so